very, very impressive performance out there tonight. Big win for you. Give me, give me an evaluation of how you felt out there, how you think you performed. And I'm going to say this again. I'm saying it in another uh, UFC interview I just did, and I sort of touched on it in the cage. Guys, I know this is like a you know a drinking crowd in Long Island, and I'm from New York, and I know how we are here. We, we want action, we want blood. Uh, but you guys, I hear a few boos out there, and that hurt my feelings a little bit. I don't know if you guys are booing me or you're booing Yancey or the lack of activity, but I'll say this. Guys, I've been doing this a long time. I've been competing at a very high level, whether it's wrestling or fighting for a very long time. You gotta trust me, I'll get you your finish. But you gotta you gotta bear with me while I do what I gotta do before the finish. Yeah, you guys know what I mean, right? Yeah. Like, I you gotta, felt like you gotta be out yeah, there and rock stock and roll out. Hold on, man. You know what gotta go out and swing wild, dude. I feel the power bar in the guy draining, right? Let me ride it. Let me ride it. Let me ride it. All right. Now it's time to ground pound. Now I got the position where I can hit him. I didn't have that position. He kept building back up to a four point stance. He wouldn't take his hand off the man. I couldn't knee him. Let me let me lay on. He's carrying my weight and his weight. Trust me when I say I'll get you your finish. But I'm not gonna. I have patience. I know when that time to go is. And I. You know, I had 20 seconds to do it, and I got done with one second left. So, guys, just bear with me. It may not be exciting five, four minutes and 59 seconds out of the round. You know what I mean? But I gave you your finish. You wanted finishes, I gave them to you. Five in a row now. I was going to say, can you talk about where you kind of feel you are in your career? Because I feel like for the longest time, you've been like the guy that the hardcores have been like, hey, he's, you know, he's the dark horse, he's a contender. But now, you know, maybe this was your opportunity to really make a statement. A known guy, a big card in the ESPN era. So, you feel like. You're a legitimate contender at this point? And you yeah, I, felt like, I felt like I was a legitimate contender six fights ago. You know what I mean? It may not look good, but I would have done six fights ago. But I cried. If there's one thing I've always been able to do, and it's compete and win. And winning is a skill. Uh, me and my coaches, uh, especially Kyle Sermonero, uh, it's like, uh, like up here coach. We talk about it all the time, man. We, we, we train some young wrestlers. And we talk about all the time, man, he just doesn't know how to win. And this guy, he may not look good in practice. He does not know what he's doing in, in drilling. Kid just knows how to win. You're looking at him. I'm that kid. You know what I mean? I know how to win. Yeah. And I do. And I've been literally since I was five years old. I've been doing. It. I don't know what it is. It's it's intangible. You know, I can't put my finger on it. I can't tell you <coughs> because of this or that. Maybe it's the way my dad raised me. Maybe it's something that's inherent and below. You know, in the heart. I don't know. Yeah. It was interesting. You know, the lead up to this fight. I mean, you've never been a, a trash talker or anything like that. But you went out of your way to tell everybody. I'm not talking about my opponent at all. What, what, why Why did you take that approach? Is it? Is this something for the rest of your career? Like, you never want to guess about yeah, it? Just don't talk to me about my opponent, man. And, like, I'm getting to the point now where it's like, here, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll talk some, uh, can I swear right now? Of course. I'll, I'll talk some shit. I'm talking shit to those people out there that go on, and when I do that, they go on the interviews, and they're like, oh, another boring guy who thinks he's going to make a living pretending to be humble. Nah, I just am humble, so I'm talking shit to you now. Like, I am humble, man. I'm not going to talk. Yancey's working his ass off. I'm working my ass off. He was definitely prepared for that fight. He, man, it took a lot more to drain him than I thought it was going to take to drain him. So he was definitely prepared, man. And he definitely, you know, they came, like, it wasn't a very long notice to be five weeks for them. So they definitely did their homework, and they came prepared. So, like, man, pretending to be humble. I just am humble. I don't want to talk about Yancey. I don't want to talk about Vince Michelle. I don't want to talk about whoever's next. I'm not... Yelling at those, my opponents. I'm yelling at the guys that keep asking me about it, man, or telling. I, here's, I guess it's more telling me about it because it always. I don't mind talking about him. Yancey's from Hawaii. Yancey fought Cowboy. Yancey beat uh, the other Cowboy. Whatever. You know what I mean? I get it. You know, I, I know what he's done. I've watched his fights on TV before I knew I was ever going to fight him. But. Uh, I forgot what I was going with this. Give me one second so we can go. No, but no, then I know where it leads. It leads to this. Well, you know what Yancey said about your takedowns, right? No, and I don't want to fucking know. You know what I mean? Because I, oh, what's he, oh, he's going to try to stop him? Well, I hope so. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're fighting, right? Uh, that wouldn't be a very good fight if he wasn't going to try to stop him. Right. right? Yep. So, like, that's what I don't get. I just don't want people telling me about, oh, did you see what he's been doing? Right? No. I'm worried about what I'm doing in practice. I don't have time to go watch or read the Twitter or watch an interview with the Yancey's. I don't. And there's nothing against him or any of my other opponents. I just, it's not, I'm more focused on, you know what I watch when I watch film? Fishing. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, my, my, my films. Man. Yeah. I'm going to watch what I do, but you got to see yourself being successful. you got to watch what you do well. Because I saw getting those takedowns in my head last night before I fell asleep. I saw them two months ago. I didn't know the opponent was, but I saw I saw off a jab entering on that. You know what I mean? I see that because I watched myself do it. And all of a sudden, you watch the other guy knocking you down with a head kick. You're like, fuck, oh, man, that could be me.
Yes. Give us an idea what you come back for. I mean, a, a date, a location that's been announced, a, a, you know, a, a ranking. What, what do you think you, you deserve now for this fight? I deserve, like, a week long fishing trip. I do. I, I trained a hard, that was hard camp, man. We did a lot of sparring. I sparred three days a week with some, some good boxers, some good MMA guys. Andre Harrison, Cody Payne, Troy Green, uh, Nick Fiore. Cab over got our boxer, our, our resident boxer cab. Cab messed me up a few times on Saturday. So like, man, I did a lot of work. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not yelling at you, but like when people ask, who you caught up? What's the next day? And I don't know. I, I don't want to think about that. I just got that big weight. Yeah, it's off my shoulder. You know what I mean? So I want to kind of like relish in that, man. Like the last thing I want to think about after that super stressful last week. And like, yeah, I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm collected, and I go out and I'm very composed in the case. But like, there's something inside that definitely is like, oh, man, I could lose. I mean, like, I, no, I won't lose. But there's something that, you know, you could be clipped, everyone's lost, you know what I mean? So like, man, it's a weight off my shoulders. No offense, but I'm fishing, man. I'm not calling anyone out, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going fishing. Where would you rank this win uh, compared to your other good teammates? Well, he's definitely, yeah, he's definitely fought a lot better guys than anyone I've ever fought. Uh, I mean, he beat better guys than anyone I've ever fought. Uh, he was up a weight division, came down, which I don't know how he did that. I mean, he definitely didn't find out about this fight that long ago. So, I mean, he's obviously a pretty disciplined dude. I mean, you can tell he did his homework on it. My coach tells me, again, I didn't watch any film on Yancey other than the fights that I watched with this. When, before I knew he was even coming back on 55, uh, he's crafty. My coach, Keith Trimble, says, oh, he's crafty. He's crafty. He's definitely, you know, got off bottom with me a couple of times. That's a couple more times than most people do. You keep racking up wins. Uh, how far do you see yourself fighting for, for the title? I want to I think we're going to get some ice cream after this, right? I hope some ice cream. Uh, Not right really Nah, man, I, I, it's not a caloric thing either. It's just a little too thick for me, and if it gets on me, it's sticky. I'm kind of like, not a German fall, but I don't like grease or sticky stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I eat like, like potato chips or popcorn, it's like this. Okay. Like, you know, yeah, a little bit OCD with that. But, um, yeah, I just want fish. I don't know. I mean, eventually, if you want to fight for a title, yeah, I would be doing it if I yeah. did. It's like saying, hey, do you want to win the NCAA title? No, I'm just wrestling because I like, no, of course you want to win. So, I mean, so it starts at five years old, yeah, wants to wrestle for the NCAA title. I want to I win a UFC belt. But, but, but I mean, in terms of like your progression in, in MMA, I got some stuff to work on. I think, yeah. I mean, could I win right now? Yeah, but it might be me and Coach Kyle Serpinero. We call it a manufactured win. It may have to be an ugly win. You know, I think I got some stuff to work on before I be the best guy. Uh, although I think I could. Yeah. I think anyone that doesn't think they could has got problems. They should probably find a different occupation. You know. How'd you feel about your performance tonight? Mark, I felt pretty good. Um, it's tough because my last ones were super exciting. I, I can't say that. I, I got the finish, man. I guess that's exciting. But, you know, I think I let those blues from the crowd uh, get to me a little bit. And not, like, while it was happening, but it hit me after a little bit. I'm like, man, I be booing, man. This is my house. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe they were booing Yancey for not getting up. I don't know. But, uh I don't know, I don't know, but that, you know, man, he's doing the right game, it's a tactical sport, man, but again, I said earlier, you gotta trust the fighters, especially the ones that, that are winning, you know what we're doing, man, I've been, I won at the highest level in the world in wrestling, I won the biggest, hardest folk style tournament wrestling in the world, and there's tactics behind that, too, you know, maybe the semifinal match when I won, the year I won the Nationals wasn't the most exciting match either, but I won, it's about, it's about getting your hand raised, and again, at the end of the day, I get the finish, man. Um, woo! Ooh, Henry. Uh-oh, this could be bad. Sorry, Mark, I'm interrupting. No, it's quite Mark's all right. Watching. I kind of turned around this to when I heard stopped, it Henry stopped him. And that stopped. Henry stopped him. I told you. Hey, that's the stopped. champ, champ, champ. Okay. <laughs> well, now, did you hear Do you hear the 10-second click? I, uh, I didn't hear the 10-second click. I heard his coaches, actually. I said it in my post-fight uh Interview the octagon. His coaches were giving me the time check. You know, obviously they're giving him the time check, but I was closer to his coaches than I was to my own. And Keith doesn't typically yell out time to me. I think he wants me to work, and he doesn't like my looking at the clock. It's barring. Um, so yeah, his coaches. Thirty-five seconds. He hits thirty-five. At that return, I heard Kyle Sermonero yell, "Hit this last one, and he'll quit." I lifted him up. I spiked him down, and I. Uh, when I flattened him out that last time, he didn't get off his belly. He kept rolling his back when I did that before. He didn't do that this time, so I knew I got to, if I can maybe peel a hand off his ear and hit him in the head a couple of times, 
and then I heard the rep say, yes, you got to work, yes, you got to protect yourself. And that's when I knew that I, I, I knew I could. And I think it was one second. Mm -hmm. Beautiful timing. Beautiful timing. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate it.